Hi, and welcome to this um, mess on my desk. I got this big Tektronix logic analyzer that I fixed recently, and I wanted to demonstrate it a bit and show you why you might want one of these, or more likely, not want one of these. This here is a 6502 computer board I made a while ago, running a blinky LED uh, example code, and with all the probes hooked up to debug that. Now, a 6502 has 16 address bits, 8 data bits, and some control signals, so to properly debug that, you need around 30 channels, which is where this logic analyzer shines. Let's turn it on and enjoy the fan noise, as the fan in this machine is quite noisy. This machine is filled with quite a lot of fast ECL logic gates and uses around 200 watts of power just on the 5 volt line to power all that logic. So yes, that's a 5 volt 40 amp power supply from 1985. Damn. When I fixed this, I also made a written blog, which you can find in the description below. It has a lot of photos on the inside of this machine, which is really nice to have a look at. Now, this particular unit has 63 channels. Uh, there are three 18 channel input boards and one 9 channel input boards. If you'd have one with all four 18 channel boards, you would have 73 channels in total, the maximum of this machine. But hey, 63 channels is uh, not bad at all. Now, these instruments have a CRT touchscreen. And how it works is quite smart. There are some infrared LEDs in the sides of the CRT and some infrared sensors, uh, transistors or diodes, I'm not entirely sure. And if you touch on the CRT, you interrupt the infrared beams going all around, and the instrument knows that you touched a button. Neat. Now, let's set up this um, logic analyzer to debug that 6502, as there's quite a few menus to have a look at before we can actually debug that. So, let's look at the menus. We're in the config menu now, which is used to set everything up. The operation level you can select how complex you want this instrument to be, from basic operation uh, up until full operation, but for now uh, basic is more than advanced enough already. Uh, in time base you can set up the clocks used as a time base, then asynchronous time base an internal clock is used to take a sample every 20 nanoseconds, or well any interval you might like. Uh, and in sync time base, uh, the clock input of a ProPod is used as a clock, which is what we'll be using for the 6502. In the memory config, you set up what cards you are using, the voltage level used, and the sample memory settings. Uh, for example, TTL voltage level for TTL logic. Um, let's set up the probe pods that I got uh, plugged in real quick. And now for channel grouping. Uh, here you can group your channels to form an address group or a data group. Um, I got two 18 channel cards for the address and data pin. So first for the address, we'll have to name the group address. And well, there's no R on the hexadecimal keypads. So yes, you need to scroll your way to find anything other than hexadecimal. Display is hexadecimal fine, and uh, pot 2 and 3 is indeed the ones I use for the uh, address signals. Now, for the data, I connected that to ProPod 6, so let's name it data. Now, to set up as probe 6, you need to put in all the channels one by one to be set up for probe 6. Uh, that does mean that you can make a group with more than one pot mixed uh, in between. As the data is just 8 bits, the rest can be set to don't care. A few leftover settings are still here from a previous configuration, so let's just clear those real quick. The clock of the 6502 is connected to the clock input of ProPod 6, so let's set up that up real quick. So, now we're ready to set up a trigger and sample some actual data. The trigger setup is set to don't care on every group, so this should always trigger as long as there is a clock available. And it did! Now, there we go. We got some random data from the Blinky LED program, so that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I just noticed, the Blinky LED program I made is in the EEPROM and it starts on address zero, uh, C000 and I see the address starting at 2000. So it looks like the two bytes of the address are the wrong way around and port 2 should be switched with port 3. Now, we can go back to the config menu, set it up correctly, um, and when you've got everything set up and correct, you can go to the utility and save your configuration. Now, I already created a config for the 6502, so just let's just load that. 
you can store configurations in non-volatile memory and in RAM, which should be battery backed. Now with that loaded, we got the address set up correctly. And on the 9 channel board, I also set up a read-write bit, which is nice to have. Uh, now let's set up the trigger, which don't care for all groups, and start again. And there we go. The address now looks correct. The read-write pin is always high, meaning that the CPU is always reading data. Uh, which makes sense. The code for the blinky is just waiting in a while one loop for an interrupt from a timer. So, yeah, that uh, all looks correct. Perfect. Now to capture all the signals on the 6502, or any other CPU you might want to analyze, you need to connect a wire to every pin of the CPU. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I designed a small breakout board for that. This one is for a 6510, but I also got one for the 6502. The keycat files are linked in the description down below. These boards have a pin header per signal and a ground per signal, and some silkscreen text on what pin is where. So this will make hooking up a logic analyzer like this Tektronix one a little easier. If you want to analyze uh, any different CPU, you might want to make a board like this yourself. Just capturing data on a running system is kinda cool, but not super useful. So let's trigger on an event. The reset event of the 6502 is fun to look at. If you take a look at the datasheet at the reset section, it lists that on a reset edge on the reset pin, there is a reset sequence that takes a few cycles, and then the program counter is loaded from memory in location FFFC and FFFD, which is then the start of the program. So let's trigger on that. So in the trigger menu, let's fill in that it triggers on address FFFC and press start. There's nothing happening right now, and that's because there's no resets happening. So I'll just press the reset button and see if it triggers. And there we go. I reset the board and it's got some data that's processing. I connected a wire to the reset pin as well. It's normally low, it turns high here, and then the chip takes 7 cycles for its reset procedure. After that, on address FFFC and FFFD, it reads its program counter, 00 and C0, which forms C000 as expected. Uh, and then it jumps to there and starts executing code. Perfect! Now a reset event should just trigger once, so let's have a look at something else. The interrupt routine for example. For the Blinky LED firmware I made, a 6522 timer is used to generate an interrupt every millisecond. An interrupt causes a pin from the 6522 to rise, which in turn causes the 6502 to jump to an address stored in memory at location FFFF and FFFD. It's kind of similar as what happens on a reset pin, but then it jumps from a, using a different location. So let's set up the trigger, press start, and we should just directly get a trigger. There we go. It loads 00 and F0 and jumps to the lo code located on F000, which is where I got my interrupt routine. Now the interrupt routine checks if the LEDs should toggle and then just jumps back to where it was executing code before. So if we scroll down, we can see it does after around 80 clock cycles. It's back at somewhere at the CXXX range where the main code is located. Awesome. This is still a simple trigger, but we can add more levels. First, we can make it wait for an address to be FFFF for the interrupt routine, and then just wait for another event before it actually triggers and captures data. The 6522 timer via chip is located on address B000, so we can wait for an interrupt and then trigger on a read-write to that chip. That's still not a super useful trigger, but it works to demonstrate a slightly more complex trigger example. So, all set up, let's start that. And the trigger is at a write on B000. It writes 00, meaning all the LEDs are turned off. B000 is the address which uh, con is connected to the GPIO ports for the LEDs. If I time it when the LEDs are on, it writes FF, meaning all LEDs are on. Of course, why should we time that when we can just set up the trigger for that? Just wait till the address is B000 and the data is FF. Here we go. It's writing FF, the RW pin is low, so that means a write. 
uh, to address B000. Now, this is just the start of the triggering options on this machine. You can wait for an event to happen multiple times, or wait for other events, uh, then just wait for something, like a delay if an event happens, or then wait for a value. There's a ton of trigger options to help debug your CPU and your program. Awesome! The sample memory is as shown in the memory configuration, just 500 and something samples. So if you want to analyze any serial protocol like I2C, SPI, UART and such, this machine is just completely rubbish. But if you're making a homebrew 8 or 16-bit computer, or you're debugging some old computer, perhaps one that's been modified by someone before, a logical analyzer like this can be quite useful to have. This one can even decode the machine code back to 6502 assembly if you have to correct ROM cards. Um, I ordered parts for that, but sadly they didn't arrive in time. Now, this was a quick tour around this machine. There's a lot that this thing can do, but then I would need to set it to full operation and actually read the almost 200 page user manual. And I'm not planning to do that. Um, the reason for that is that this machine is going to a friend's very soon. And this video is partly to get him up and running um, and debug the Apple computer he wants to debug. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please comment, like, subscribe and all that. I'm happy I can turn off this machine now. It's outputting quite some heat and noise and it's a nice summer's day outside so best to leave this off and for me to go outside for once. Thanks for watching.